department and a size advantage once again here to Fuji of about 15 pounds, but a different size advantage than was dictated in the fight between Yamamoto and Daiju Takasi. I truly believe that, you know, that 15 pounds or so that Fuji has on Yamamoto really is of, of no consequence. These two are pretty equally sized and they appear to be equally matched up. It'll be interesting to see if Yamamoto finally opens up or if he's going to continue that methodical style. Our Japanese announcer with the introductions of our fighters who will take part in this tournament final and then the two heavyweight matchups will complete our night here in Tokyo Bay NK Hall in Tokyo, Japan. Kenichi Yamamoto, 23 years old, as I mentioned earlier, born in Osaka, his second match now since leaving the rings and his second match on the card here this evening. And refereeing this matchup, Big John McCarthy, who will work the remainder of the fights on the card here this evening. So here we go. The tournament final between oh. Yamamoto and boom, Yamamoto goes down. And Yamamoto did something he didn't do in the first fight. He came out headhunting for Fuji, threw a wild punch, and Fuji was underneath him, picked him up, dropped him down, and he's in a half guard. Now he's in a closed guard, and let's see what Yamamoto can do to the ground, and it appears that's exactly what Yamamoto did. He waited to see and hold back you know, all the skills that he could and not show his hand to Fuji before he had to. Uh, Yamamoto with the size advantage that he had on Takasi, as we look at it now in a bit of retrospect, Jeff, may have been doing exactly what you said. It's almost like the analogy of an NFL team not showing their whole offense in the preseason, knowing the tapes are abundant throughout the National Football League. He also had, I think, the mental advantage knowing that he had outsized his opponent, Takasi by such a great differential that his confidence was at an all-time high. And he didn't burn up lots of energy to overkill a victory. He did what he needed to do. He won the fight. He conserved energy, and he didn't show his hand. A smart tactic. Well, smart it would appear right now. We'll see as this fight continues if, indeed, that was the mindset of one Kenichi Yamamoto. This uh, tournament final will be as all the fights except our championship one have been tonight with the three rounds of five minutes each. And then if it does go the distance, Williams and Randleman will fight for five, five minute rounds. Just underway here in our tournament final. Mike Goldberg, Jeff Blatnick, James Wormy, our crew from SEG Sports, happy to bring you UFC 23. Fuji attempting some ground and pound tactic here. No submission attempt yet by Yamamoto, but Fuji fairly active here in the guard, attempting some strikes. Now you see the subtle difference in the guard here. It's not the close guard, it's more of the open guard with the heels hooked, if you will, or at least the, the heels on the side of his opponent, a la the TK guard. And exactly, and the reason the feet are there is if Fuji raises up, Yamamoto is going to help raise him up even more, get him way up in the air, possibly reverse him. Fuji now striking down. Attempted arm bar, Fuji aware of it. Nice up by Yamamoto. Good escape, get to his feet. But Fuji now seems like he has found something. He's starting to become very active throwing strikes from within Yamamoto's guard. Couple of takedowns also here for Fuji now in this round. Now, in working with our Japanese partners here in Tokyo, this is a very special night for the Japanese fighters who have been featured in their UFC debuts. And certainly, I would guess as it is when we talk to most of the Japanese fighters, Fuji, Yamamoto have the dreams of coming and fighting and continuing in the UFC and having the opportunity in the future to fight stateside or wherever else our events in the next millennium could take place. Well, we know we've had some athletes from Brazil whose big dream was to make it to the United States and fight in the States in the UFC, and they were able to do it. Certainly here in Japan, that feeling is in all of the athletes that enter the octagon here as well. Fuji being able to rack up some points, actions slowing now as Yamamoto ties Fuji up. 
those legs coming up very high when he's looking for a submission. And one thing Yamamoto did here was he was being driven into the fence and he turned himself towards the center of the octagon and that allows his head room to maneuver, his body room to maneuver so that he's not pinned up against the fence and is a stationary target. Fuji now scoring with strikes again. Front headlock position as we call it here in wrestling with your opponent underneath. He can also knee here, no attempt at a knee yet. A Couple of good strikes again and Fuji standing right in front of Yamamoto. I've got to believe that Yamamoto does burn up. Submission attempt again by Yamamoto going after the leg and ankle. Well, the Fuji. left eye now of Yamamoto is cut. There is a cut on the left eye of Kenichi Yamamoto and Fuji has just continuously flurried with punches that are landing. And he continues to land right hands and work inside the guard of Yamamoto. Left, right, left, right, continuing to battle. And Yamamoto trying to pull down his opponent. But Yamamoto is in trouble here in round one. As Fuji continues his onslaught and decisively wins the first five minutes of competition. I would have to agree with you 100%. Without a doubt, that round should go to Fuji. Very active from within his opponent's guard. Multiple strikes, continuous strikes, dictating the pace, octagon control, a couple of takedowns. He did it all in that first round. So Fuji of our tournament competitors, overall the most impressive here this evening. I mean, he just continuously works and works and works. He was actually hitting him before Yamamoto even got to that position of cover-up. He went to cover-up because he was getting struck. So here was a flurry of maybe 10, 15 punches that all seemed to land in varying degrees against Yamamoto. And the one thing that you notice there, and we've seen in the past, is there's a hesitation on the part of some fighters to just almost go out with an all-around arsenal like displayed by Fuji because of the possibility of a submission or an arm bar. And it doesn't seem as if Fuji has been concerned about that possibility. Ducks under the big right hand of Yamamoto nice and now kick. tries to work him again. That kick prevented Yamamoto from throwing that big hand. And it looks as though Yamamoto is going down again. Fuji behind him. He needs to be careful. He can get elbowed in the head here unless he keeps his head tight. And down he goes. This is almost a wrestling position here. It looks like the starting of a collegiate wrestling match. I was surprised that Fuji didn't try to do more from behind there, but didn't take advantage of taking his back. He's now in Yamamoto's guard again. Might be able to come around with that left hand. Oh, he's hanging on with that hand. It's hard to tell when the gloves are intertwined like that, whose hand is whose. Looks like he's hanging on to the material of the glove, making it hard for Fuji to go ahead and throw strikes. Yamamoto seemingly gives it one or two big efforts and then closes up into a shell and, and, and becomes fairly inactive. Fuji has carried this fight from the start Fuji displayed skills in his first fight, both on the ground and on his feet. And here, doing it again, he's able to hit on his feet, and particularly against Yamamoto, put him down on the ground when he wants to. Inside the close guard right now, Fuji inside the guard of Yamamoto. Yamamoto keeping the distance close so that there are no punches thrown, at least at this point, by Fuji. Second fight of the night for both of these men with uh, about a duration of, you know, an hour to 90 minutes of rest time in between with the other fights that took place here this evening. And I hope you have enjoyed all the great action thus far from Tokyo. The heavyweight fights are still forthcoming. And those are the ones you want to refresh your drink for and settle in because we expect both of them to be absolutely dynamic. Fuji not taking any risk here. He knows he's got a big round in the bank. It appears as though he might win this round close, so he doesn't need to have to carry the fight in his mind. He's probably thinking, let's make Yamamoto start to become offensive, and I'll pick my time and angle 
to create my opportunity. And that's a real key statement, Jeff, right there, because if that is the case, then we are going to have to see Yamamoto try to take it at a different level, shift it to a different gear, and dictate one of his fights for the first time tonight, because he was, as you mentioned, passive against Takasi. And in this position of being down on points, at some juncture and junction of this fight, Yamamoto's going to have to make a move. His only real offensive skills that he's shown in this fight thus far are just big right hands that missed standing. Once he's gotten brought down on the ground, he really has been unable to do anything offensive. Does he have a guard? Yes, he has a guard. Is he threatening Fuji with the guard? Absolutely not. There might have been one attempt at a, at a submission early on, and after that, there's been no attempts at submission. As I recall, he did go after Fuji's leg that one time. Right, right. One minute, 25 seconds remaining in round two. Fuji also has slowed down, but a few strikes here and there are more than any strikes that Yamamoto has thrown. I'm not sure how Yamamoto feels he's going to win this fight. It's a lot like Takasi fighting Yamamoto. What can Yamamoto, Yamamoto do offensively from the bottom to threaten Fuji? And up to now, it really hasn't been much. The crowd's starting to react a bit. Final minute of round two between Fuji and Yamamoto. Oh, he's looking for the leg again. Oh, he might get it. And, and he does. Tip. And there's the tap by submission. The first submission of the night. Yamamoto wins the tournament. And Mike, that's going to answer my question. What can Yamamoto here do to threaten Fuji from the bottom? Out of nowhere, he goes into that inversion, uh, inverted guard. And as Fuji tried to maneuver around it, he snaked that Achilles, locked up on it. It was tight. It forced Fuji to tap. So the 23-year-old wins the UFCJ tournament.